Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel of Eating Sprouts. My name is Blis van Amsterdam and today I'll be recording a video here answering the good old question of are sprouts and microgreens kosher? And before I go deep into answering that question and explaining what kosher actually is, I'd like to first start quoting from the Bible, from Genesis 1.29, which is basically the beginning of the Bible, of all the religions and all the denominations that use the Bible, they always begin with the Genesis. And I'll be doing it from this Bible, which was a gift from my good old friend Shiv from Chennai, India, who is a follower of Christ. And he's actually the brain behind the platform of eating sprouts as you know it today. So Shiv, thank you for that. And also thank you for this Bible, which I'm going to be using today to quote Genesis 1.29. And as you know, the Genesis is the first book of the Torah, of the Torah, which is the beginning of the Old Testament or the Bible, of all the Bibles. And in the beginning is 129. So this is kind of the beginning of the beginning. And basically it says here, And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be food. So from here it continues into Genesis 1.30 and so on, but basically I just wanted to start with that because this is the beginning of the beginning and it clearly states that seeds have been the food that have been given to us here on earth. So once that's said, basically we can start then explaining what is kosher. And before we actually get into that, the first thing that we have to do is clarify or explain the misconception or false belief that some people have that they think that the Judaism of the Old Testament or the Judaism practice during the time of the temple, the time when Jesus of Nazareth came, the time of the expulsion of the Jews from Jerusalem and all that has anything to do with the Judaism of today. That could not be further from the truth, beginning with the fact that it is not the Bible which is the most important, most read, most studied book in Judaism anymore. Now it's the Jewish Talmud. What it means is that Judaism as it is practiced today has really nothing to do with the patriots and the prophets of the Old Testament. What that means is that the rabbis and the Jewish authorities of today, the formulation of God and the world around us does not come from the Bible or the Torah, it comes from the Jewish Talmud. Now, what is the Talmud and how did it originate to what it is today? The Talmud first began as the oral law, prevalent of the time of the Second Temple, the time when Jesus of Nazareth came, and actually took its written form after Jesus of Nazareth came, somewhere around the year 200 CE, or Common Era, or AD for Anno Domini, or after Christ. And that's when it started as the Jerusalem Talmud, which later was taken to Babylon, and was later developed into the Babylonian Talmud, which took its final written form somewhere around the year 800 CE or Common Era or AD for Anno Domini or after Christ in the multi-volume set known as the Jewish Talmud. It is this set of books which happens to be the most important, most authoritative book in modern Judaism as we know it today. More than the Jerusalem Talmud and more than the Bible and the Torah itself. And it's in this Babylonian Talmud where the rabbinic authorities wrote the first and final word on everything regarding Jewish life, Jewish attitude, Jewish beliefs, Jewish practices, Jewish behavior, and where it has been formed and set its tone to remain that way throughout the ages and it has been spelled quite specifically right there in the Jewish Talmud, which also include the Gemara or Gemara, the Sohar, which is where Kabbalah comes from, maybe you heard of it, and also includes the Torah and the Psalms. And all of that is why it's called nowadays the Jewish Bible, which basically include the Talmud, the Gemara, the Sohar, the Torah, and the Psalms. Now, the Talmud, it's about 6,200 pages long. It's a whole collection of books which is comprised of the Mishnah and the Gemara. And all of this makes a lot of literature to be studied. And that's why there's a lot of people around the world who spend their whole life studying the Talmud and analyzing it and debating it because there's a very rich set of philosophical information that encourages debate and profound study of all this literature. And in fact, a lot of people haven't even read the whole Talmud. The fact is that most of the rabbis that I have met have not even read the whole Talmud. And it makes sense. If you read a whole page of the Talmud a day in your life, you will have finished the whole Talmud in about 17 years. Do the math. It's 
quite extensive piece of literature and it's quite complicated as well. Believe me, I've studied the Talmud for many years and it's really something hard to understand, hard to analyze, that basically encourages endless debates and studies of this literature. And it is here in the Talmud, in this literature, where every single thing of Jewish life is very specifically detailed and explained and that relates every single aspect of Jewish life, included but not limited to Jewish dietary laws, also called the laws of Kashrut or Kashrut laws, and this is where the word kasher, meaning fit, comes from. Basically, what it means is that the food is fit for consumption, and that's where the word kosher comes from, which is basically a Yiddish word derived of the word kasher, which means that it is in accordance to the Jewish dietary laws of kashrut or the kashrut laws. And now, where does the word kosher come from? The word kosher comes from the Yiddish language. Yiddish is a post-Talmudic Eastern European Jewish language. Uh, nowadays, it's not necessarily very spoken. It's spoken in small communities, mostly in places like Europe or even North America. But the language itself is not a very prevalent language nowadays, but it's still alive. Now, here in North America, we have adopted a lot of words that come from Yiddish. One of those words is the word kosher, which basically means that it is satisfying the laws of kashrut and therefore it is fit for consumption. Okay. Now, of course, there is the use of slang, which means that it's okay. That's fine, but that's not the real meaning. The real meaning is a religious Talmudic meaning of satisfaction of the laws of kashrut for human consumption. That's what it's basically means and basically we will find this word in those products that are processed and handled that have been packed and we will see the hexer or the seal of the kosher certifications in these packs normally the international symbol for kosher is the letter k now it comes in different ways it comes with a star it comes with a circle it comes with a square it comes with nothing else just a regular k that you can find basically what that means is this products have been kosher certified. Now, around the world, each country kind of has their own certification. I know that France, for example, they have their own kosher certification that I'm not very familiar with. I'm familiar with the kosher certifications from North America, which are very prevalent in most of the products we find at the supermarkets. Now, the most common seals of Hexer of the kosher certifications are, like I said, the K that comes in any forms and the U, which is basically the Hexer for the union of orthodox congregations and that is what you will see so if you see products with a u that means they are kosher certified and what it means is that this foods process of handling and preparation and packing has been meticulously observed by these rabbis who can certify that during this process there has been no law of kashrut that has been broken in other words that, that this food complies or is in compliance with every single talmudic kashrut law now some people may confuse here the laws of kashrut from the Talmud with those mandates given in the Torah in the Leviticus or the Deuteronomy, but that is not complete. In fact, that would be incomplete because the full set of Jewish dietary laws of kashrut laws are in the Talmud. So it is not enough to follow the laws given in the Torah. No, it has to comply with the full spectrum of laws given in the Talmud. And only certifiable foods that have gone through this meticulous observation can be kosher certified. And that's what basically kosher certification is. Now, this kosher certification does not have anything to do with nutrition, health, or weight loss, or even quality of product. And it's very important to be clear about that. Some people confuse kosher certification with foods being nutritious or healthy nothing could be further from the truth. The fact is that kosher certification is only and exclusively an observation of Jewish dietary laws and does not mean that it's healthy or nutritious or that helps with weight loss. And I'm going to give you one or two examples that approves it right now. And the first one is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, as you can see here, is kosher certified. And as you can know, Coca-Cola is non nutritious it's not healthy, and it definitely doesn't help with weight loss. And in fact, Coca-Cola is so kosher that it has a second Jewish certification for kosher for Passover, which the details is not important right now, but that proves that Coca-Cola has at least two different kinds of kosher certification, makes it a very kosher-friendly food or drink in this case. 
which proves that has nothing to do with health or weight loss or nutrition. Now, there's a second example that I can name here really fast, and it's McDonald's. McDonald's has also kosher certification in some of its franchises. Now, it's the same in McDonald's food with the same Coca-Cola that is served at McDonald's, and it's still non-nutritious, not good for your health, and definitely not good for weight loss, but it happens to be in accordance with every single cashew law. And that's basically what it means. So when you see a product that is kosher, it does not mean that it's a good quality product, but it also does not mean that it's a bad quality product. The truth of the matter is that there are many high quality products that happen to be kosher certified. In fact, many of my most favorite food products happen to be kosher certified. That only means that kosher products go from the worst quality of products all the way to the best quality of products and everything in between. Because it's not about the quality of the product, of how nutritious or healthy it is. It's about it being in accordance and compliance with every single kosher Talmudic dietary law of cashew. That's all it means. And they take it very seriously. So once you see a kosher certified food, you can rest assured that it is in accordance with every Jewish law because the people who certify this food take their job very seriously. So in that regard, it's very safe if you're following the laws of cashew. Now, it is also very important to understand that these kosher certifications cost a lot of money. They're very expensive. And in order to get kosher certified, the company has to first pay a big down payment to get a team of expert rabbis to monitor in detail every single process of the preparation and handling and packing of these foods. And once it is certified initially, this requires an annual renewal. So it means every year they have to pay again and again and again, making it an added tax to these foods that people consume. Now, the truth is that the people that even knows what kosher is and the Talmud is in North America are less than 2% of the population. And of this group, only a fraction of that actually cares to follow the kashrut laws all the time. So it makes it way less than 1% of the people who actually need and require and benefit from these kosher certifications leaving the 99 plus percent of the rest of the population paying for that extra tax that benefits only less than 1% of the population. So that means that basically if you're trying to save money on your food, you would be well advised to seek for products that are not kosher certified so you can save money. That's all it means. Doesn't mean that it's kosher certified is better quality than non-kosher certified foods. The fact is that oftentimes, non-kosher certified food have the same or even better quality but significantly less price. In fact, I'm just going to give one example. There's a big franchise of German supermarkets that just came to America recently and they're offering significant discounts on their foods. If you look closer, one of the reasons is because they offer non-kosher certified foods. So they don't have to pay that extra tax and the savings is ultimately passed to the final consumer. So if you're looking to save money every time you buy groceries, then it would be a good idea to look for products that are not kosher certified because that means a lot of savings and money in your pocket every time you go shopping for food. Now, I'm not endorsing these German chains of supermarkets because they also offer processed foods that are really not healthy for you. However, if you absolutely have to buy these products because you need them, well, then you might want to consider these other supermarkets that have most of the products that are non-kosher certified and therefore have a big saving in their prices, which ultimately represents a big saving for you. And that is the truth. However, there is one exception to this rule, which I'd like to name right now, and it's one kosher certification called kosher parve, or parve is written both ways, which basically means that this product has no animal products in it, okay? And I think a lot about the vegetarians, especially the vegans, because these certifications happen to be specifically useful for the vegan people who want to have a vegan cheese, meaning that has no dairy. So kosher part of the certification offers the guarantee that this product has no dairy or meat in this case, but in the particular case of vegans and vegan cheese, kosher part of the cheese offers a great alternative for vegan eaters that want to find a cheese that has no dairy in it. And in this case, I absolutely encourage people to look and pay for the, for the price for a culture part of a certification because it guarantees, and like I said, rabbis take this very seriously. So if you see a kosher part of a cheese, you can rest assured it has no dairy in it. And any other product that is kosher part of it has 
no animal products or vegetarians will also benefit in some other products as well however again it doesn't mean that kosher part is good cheese i'm gonna give you one example and it's the american cheese is really not a very good cheese it's almost like plastic i really don't like it some of these american cheese don't even melt those are the worst ones and the truth is that a lot of kosher part of the cheese is really not healthy it's one of these plastic cheese that are not good happen to be in accordance with all the cash food laws and doesn't have any dairy in it therefore it's kosher part of the certified but it's not a healthy product it's not a healthy cheese and something you should stay away from but if you absolutely need to eat something that it resembles cheese and that has no dairy kosher part of the certifications will give you the guarantee that that is the product that you're looking for so basically other than that that is what kosher is i hope that you find this video useful and you have learned something about what kosher is where it comes from and how you can really benefit from it whether it's avoiding it in order to save money or whether it's using kosher fiber foods for your vegan needs in any case that is a reality here in north america most of the foods are kosher certified which kind of create a little bit of irony because kosher foods were designed that way to make a separation between Jews and Gentiles and now you have all this population of people eating kosher certified foods which is basically confusing to me but I think this is a topic better left for the expert students of the Talmud to debate among themselves and for us just to understand what kosher is and how you can benefit from it or simply avoid it in order to save money now when it comes to sprouts and microgreens which is the topic here are sprouts and microgreens kosher? Well, sprouts and microgreens are so kosher that they do not need to be certified. Like I said in the Genesis 129, it is our mandate. Every food that yields seeds are given to us from the very beginning of the creation as our food. So if you take an organic seed and you grow it at home and you see it grow and you know it's clean and it has no bugs and it's perfectly clean, then that food is so kosher so clean so perfect that the food itself is a blessing for us therefore it does not need to be kosher certified it's completely in accordance with every single kosher rule from the torah from the talmud and everything else and furthermore these food are not only kosher friendly and kosher parve but they're also halal friendly they're all natural they're vegetarian friendly they're vegan they're gluten free they're antibiotic free they're sugar free they're fat free they're cholesterol free with no msg with no growth hormones with no preservative with no animal testing or suffering with no chemical additives or artificial flavoring which can also be economical or cost effective homegrown organic non-gmo pesticide free and of course healthy nutritious and delicious which makes it to be in accordance with all creeds and beliefs and practices around the world and that are easily available because you can grow it yourself and take control of your own food so what else do you want you have everything here in sprouts and microgreens and yes it is completely kosher to eat them it doesn't matter what you practice what you believe in this food is always good and remember again they're healthy they're very nutritious and they're also delicious and they combine really well with other food so with that said i hope that you like this video and i hope that you learned something and that you find even more value in all these foods that are offered here in this channel of eating sprouts that i have been using to heal myself and now i am reaping the benefits of eating sprouts and microgreens and that's why i'm passing this information to you so i hope that you like this video if you did give me a like to let me know that you like this video if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to the channel because it is here in this channel where i'm sharing all this valuable information that i'm learning of how to eat and live a healthy lifestyle and it is the sprouts and microgreens the center of it all with that said i thank you for being here in this video i hope to see you in the future videos and from the beautiful city of miami lakes my name is bliss Benanza, and remember be what you eat bye